In the last installment, we said what would happen if we had weights placed at different locations, if we had them placed, say, here and here and here and down here. Well, we could predict those very well, but we ended on, up on the end saying, well, what if it's here or what if it's here? Well, that's our subject that we're going to deal with in this installment. How do we determine the relationship of that, <clears throat> of the torque? So the first thing to notice is we have our, our center of the circle like so, um, and <clears throat> this is the location in green. And of course, we want the force that is perpendicular to that. So the perpendicular to the circle, which is perpendicular to the radius, is represented by this line, which makes this... which makes this a perpendicular. Makes that a perpendicular. And if we draw the force of gravity, which is the force driving this entire thing, why that force of gravity is going to be located here. So is there a component of this that would be acting <coughs> in the direction uh, that's, that is tangent to the circle? So we may notice then with our first blue angle that we have, we have two, two angles, uh, constituent angles, and let's call this one x and let's call this one y. Well, we know that x plus y now equals 90 because it's a right angle. We also know, however, that this, that this is a 90 and so is this. And so we know that x, that angle z, x plus z must equal 90. Well, of course, then we can see that y equals z. So this angle is y, and that makes this angle x. Now, what we are looking for, then, is a component of the gravity in this direction. Now, however long we drew this for, if we could draw it to there, we're looking for that side. So we're looking for the hypotenuse. We have now proved that this angle equals this angle, and that's key. We've shown that y, the angle y, those two angles labeled y are equal to each other. We just did that. <clears throat> so now, if we want to find this value, this is our hypotenuse, and our adjacent is the force of gravity. Ooh, misspoke here. Now, how I knew to draw the triangle that way, and why I made a mistake to, in initially, is that it's not possible for a component of gravity to be larger than itself. So the gravity itself must be the hypotenuse. So the way I had drawn it previously, it didn't work that way. So that's how we know it must be drawn like this, because the gravity must be the hypotenuse. So this makes this the adjacent angle, this the opposite, and this the hypotenuse. So looking, uh, putting that into formulaic form, we could then say that since we are looking for the A side cosine of theta or y is that force perpendicular A all over the hypotenuse, which is Fg. So the force perpendicular is equal to Fg cosine theta. And we, of course, so we've got Fg cosine theta. And we know the direction here. Wait for it, wait for it. The direction, this direction here, is a negative torque. A negative torque. So what we had just shown in that <laughs> proof is that the F perpendicular is... Fg cosine theta. And the torque, then, is going to be R perpendicular F, and that is R Fg cosine theta, and we know the direction is negative. So we have a negative Fg cosine theta. Notice, then, we can see that Fg is mg,
fg is, is uh, mg. And so this then is the actual maximum torque, which is related to mg cosine theta. And notice it's a negative cosine function, which is what we said initially. And so that is our how we can find the torque when the angle is not at 90. And again, you see that um, by modeling it ourselves, we came up with a cosine with not the sine.